to Star Soaps channel. How are you today? I'm doing good. I have my Harley Quinn highlights, red and blue. Today I'm going to be making my candy cane soap. That's right, a really popular Christmas soap that sells really well at this time of year. So come along with me and I'll show you how I make it. Squee! Now as we always do, we're going to add our cooled lye water to our cooled oils and never the other way around. We start off, I always strain because I always use mulberry silk in my soaps. And I'm going to be adding some lovely fresh goat's milk to this batch. That's right, goat's milk soap, yay! I have found a source and I've been given a whole bunch of goat's milk, so I've frozen most of it. This is the fresh goat's milk though, and that's why I'm adding it just now, right as I've only just brought the soap to emulsification. And I can give it a real thorough blend and mix that yummy goat's milk all through the whole soap. Gorgeous! So I'm going to be making a lot more goat's milk soaps in 2017. I will also be making soaps that do not have goat's milk and do not have any beeswax or any mulberry silk so that they'll be vegan friendly because I've had a few inquiries about that as well. But I would like to also have a range of goat's milk soap because it is so lovely. Now that I've been working with it, I absolutely see what everybody's going on about. It makes the soap lather so creamy. I just love it. So yes, there will be vegan star soaps and there will be goat's milk star soaps coming in 2017. So I'm quite excited about that. So I have now added my fragrance and I used used up one bottle of candy cane and then carried on with my new bottle of candy cane so that's what you saw just happen and I'm actually using a red oxide here not a mica because I find that it achieves the color that I want much better in a larger portion of soap than the mica does I end up using a lot of mica to achieve that color whereas I only need a little bit of the oxide and it gets this lovely bright shade of ready pink so I'm pretty happy with that. A little bit of titanium dioxide going into the base to help keep that white. So we have that nice contrast between the red and the white. And now we're just going to give the red a good stick blend and bring all of that colour up off the bottom. I usually like to go around with my spatula as well and scrape the walls and scrape the bottom. And just make sure that I got every last little bit of that colour incorporated. Otherwise when you get to the last bit of the pour with your coloured soap, you can quite often find that there is little specks of colour in it and it's not the best look. I don't like it. So I'll just give the table a quick clean up before I put my moulds down. They have wooden bases and they tend to sort of absorb the oils and things if I don't keep things nice and clean. So as I said I'm doing a double batch and I'm not going to try and do perfect straight lines because honestly guys perfect straight lines have eluded me. I just can't seem to do it. I don't know if it's that I don't get the soap at the right consistency or what it is, but I'm over it. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour a bit and a bit and a bit and a bit, and then I'm going to hang a swirl the whole lot at the end because, you know, why stress yourself? It's already the silly season. We're already feeling quite stressed out, aren't we? So we don't need to add to that. <laughs> One thing I have noticed, though, as I go, as I keep pouring, is that not only does the soap seem to want to layer more, as the moulds fill up, but also the actual soap in the jugs seem to be thickening with each pour. So I've got the spatulas in there so I can give them a quick mix up and just help to keep them fluid as I pour them. But you can see that layer of white I got pretty much beautifully on top of the red. This is sort of what I'm achieving with these lines, except that they never quite work out perfectly straight. So yeah, I have tried lots of different techniques and I will leave a link below to the candy cane soap where I actually made the lines last time. The lines came out pretty good, but because I mixed up each batch separately, each little tiny bit of soap to make another line, I ended up with the colours not being perfectly even at the end. So there's always something, isn't there? <laughs> and now we're coming through with the hanger tool to give it a lovely swirl. And as I've said quite a bit recently, I love the hanger tool. I'm really digging the hanger swirls lately. So it's time to layer up the last little bits of soap in the mould and give it a pretty little swirl on top and then I'm going to get, I think I changed my mind, I was going to just leave it like this and then I decided no there's a little bit of soap left so rather than putting it into other moulds I popped it into a piping bag and I thought I'll just pipe a little bit on the very very top of the soap because I love the way it looks. I don't do it very often because I find that piping can be one of those things that's quite temperamental 
sometimes it wants to work beautifully and sometimes it doesn't work at all for me so and I need to buy a new piping bag I've noticed that this piping bag the liner in it has basically worn away and now the soap or whatever I'm trying to pipe seems to want to squeeze out of the bag instead of going down into my soap so that's a little bit frustrating but anyway so I didn't quite have enough soap to finish off the last little loaf there so I'm going to race off and I'm going to get some toppers that I made from a previous batch. So this is leftover piping from when I was making the Pokemon cupcakes. And I just piped them onto a silicon liner. So they're like little dollops and they work quite well to cover up. I don't quite have enough for every single bar to have one. So I'm just placing them here, there and everywhere. <laughs> but they do look great. So if you ever have a little bit of leftover soap and you want to do that, I do recommend it. And if you're not very good at piping on the top of your soap, but you want the look of pipe, to pipe soap, then what I would say is that you could just take a little bit of soap and pipe up, and just like how I've done, and then you can use it later on a batch. So the last thing to go on was some little candy cane Christmas trees. Um, they are in red and green. The green ones are standing out much more than the red ones against the red soap. But they look really lovely, and I like them. The only problem that I have is that as they sit and cure, Sometimes they dissolve and you end up with just a little green puddle on the top and that's not quite what I'm going for. So we leave it overnight and we're back again the next day to cut the soap. I'm quite excited to see how the inside of the soap has turned out because I'm always intrigued by the hanger swirl, what I'm going to get. I never know what I'm going to get. So first of all I will show you the little end slice. Not bad amazing but there's a bit of a swirl there and this other little end piece is just going to get used for moldable soap dough and I'll leave the link below to the moldable soap dough video for you if you want but I have noticed that a certain someone who doesn't like my moldable soap has been disliking that video <laughs> and disliking any video where I talk about it but sorry guys I'm not going to stop teaching you awesome tricks I really feel like that's how the abundance flows I don't like to sell my recipes, I like to give them away to you, and I, yeah, I like to inspire you, I like to show you these cool things I can do, and then show you how you can do it too. So, I'm sorry that some certain people that are trying to sell their recipes are frustrated with me that I'm giving them away for free, but I'm not going to stop, I'm going to keep on giving them away for free, because that's how the abundance flows. That's how I learned from Teach, from Soaping 101 and her generosity, and that's how I plan to give back. Wow, look at that one! almost looks like a dragon's head or something it's amazing oh I love the swirls I love how they turn out you never know what you're gonna get now if you can hear some background noise in this video I do apologize my daughter is home from school it's school holidays now and she is playing with Lego and I can hear it crashing and banging in the background <laughs> so I hope you guys can't hear it crashing and banging in the background but that's all right it's part of life eh? <laughs> My son's at kindy still, but today is his very last day, and then he'll be home with me for the holidays. I wonder what activities we can do. Maybe we could do a kids' soap making video. Do leave a, a little comment below if you think that's a good idea. Give me a thumbs up. That's how I'll know if you want me to do it. So here we go with the second loaf. We got some pretty amazing swirls in the first one, so let's see what we get in this one.
vinyl bars all lined up and ready to be moved up into the curing rack. I do love how the piping comes out like that with the little red and white dollops in there and then when you cut it it's like, I don't know, cutting into a jawbreaker or something. You can see all the different layers. And this week I'd like to highlight Nellie Cardona and her awesome Buddha soaps that she made and shared in our group, Star Soaps Family, over on Facebook. I just love Buddha. I've got quite a few Buddha statues around my house and a little necklace with Buddha. These Buddha soaps are by far the most amazing soaps. I would love to get that mold, Nelly. I'm totally jelly. <laughs> so if you'd like your photo highlighted, then do come over to the Star Soaps family on Facebook. Join our group and share your creations with us because we love to see them. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did and you want to see more like it, feel free to hit that subscribe button down below, become a member of our Star Soaps family and feel the soapy love. Bye!